Welcome everyone. This is a brief demonstration video of the Pace Web Portal and some of its features. Uh, one can navigate to this website uh, by going to pace.org.gov in your web browser. Uh, by default, you will get to this page, uh, uh, which displays the most recent experiments that have been uploaded into Pace. Uh, let me give you a brief overview of the high-level navigation menu and then dive into some of the other features. Uh, if one is interested in uh, uh, looking at experiments that have been run on a specific computational platform, uh, they can go to this platforms uh, menu and navigate to the particular machine. So, in this case, I am on the Compies page and this lists the most recent experiments. Uh, you can go cl click on more experiments to get to further experiments and I will show you more refining capabilities to, to get to uh, your specific interest uh, and uh, your specific experiments of interest. Uh, you can also navigate to a specific users experiments by going to the users page. Uh, there is also a benchmarks page which contains some predefined configurations that uh, we in the performance group would like to keep track of. And the, the item that would be of most interest to people would be the simulations um, uh, uh, sub menu where which lists the uh, big science campaigns that we have run and uh, the performance data from those experiments. So, this contains the DEC V1 simulation data, the high res water cycle runs, uh, the MMF fairly science which is the uh, corresponding exascale computing project uh, for E3SM and some of the simulations uh, with that model, the super parameterization model. There is also uh, data for the BGC simulations as well. Uh, and then there is the Navi resources menu which contains links for how to upload the data, some search tips and the demo videos which might be one of the ways you might have come across this video. Um, so, uh, going back, uh, circling back to one of the simulations. So, let us look at uh, uh, the DEC V1 simulations first. Uh, so, when you navigate to this, you uh, select this uh, particular case name uh, and all the experiments corresponding to that. So, uh, by default, it will show you uh, uh, the, the experiment sorted by uh, chronological date with the most recent at the top. Uh, so, you can sort by uh, various attributes. So, in this case, I want to sort by uh, run length in descending order. So, uh, this is one of the jobs which uh, which has a, one of the more uh, run length duration. So, uh, so, this search results overview actually shows you the uh, the experiment ID, which is space internal ID for keeping track of this experiment, uh, the username, machine, the composite resolution, the case name, which is truncated for display here, but the full name is stored in the database, uh, the total number of processing elements used for this run, and uh, the run length and the model throughput. So, you also have uh, uh, other data as well. So, if you want to drill further into this particular experiment, you can click on anywhere on that row to get to this experiment details page. So, this lists most of the experiments metadata out there, which will be of high level interest. So, most of the attributes that we have already listed including, you know, runtime, initialization and finalization time and the model throughput. Of, uh, of interest would be this P layout diagram, which shows you uh, the processor number and the layout uh, uh, for the various components and the simulation time that has. Uh, uh, each component has taken place. So, this data is also available in tabular form down here. Uh, you have uh, uh, the component name, the runtime and the throughput uh, uh, that each component took. Uh, so, uh, going back, uh, uh, now uh, you can also drill into uh, these summary charts. So, uh, th there is a stats file for each uh, run, which lists the MPI wall max timers. So, these are so, in a parallel run, uh, these are the uh, maximum amount of time any parallel process took uh, within this particular code region. So, uh, so these timers will show you where most of the model's time has been spent. Uh, you, you can also look at the corresponding wall time minimum. So, sometimes some of the load balancing issues and other things, uh, you could, uh, but uh, you could you could take a look into uh, dive into those by looking at some of these timers and the associated wall max and wall mains for these processes. So, uh, uh, so that is uh, one of the summary views. Uh, now, if you want to look at a particular root process, so, uh, so each of these runs, uh, if you look at uh, uh, multiple experiments, they, there is a root process at 0, some components have the root process at 640 and others. So, uh, you could uh, look at the particular root process and look at the data for that. Uh, so, 
uh, you can recursively dive into uh, the data. So, you can uh, uh, look for uh, look at the raw to start at the top drill down into drill down deeper into uh, whatever sub area is of interest and uh, dr drill into the performance data as well. Um, so, now uh, going back into uh, some of the other let us look at the one of the highest uh, uh, water cycle campaigns. So, here again you can sort by uh, run length throughput you can look at uh, uh, in the descending order. So, uh, one of the highest throughput experiments that we had was 0 0.8, but let us look at one uh, with, with a large run length. So, that is rep more representative of the kind of throughput that we have seen. So, this is a 274 day model run uh, with 0 0.77 uh, similar, uh, similar DS per day model throughput. So, uh, one can look into, uh, so I have shown you a tree graph. Um, uh, there are also other kind of graph types as well. So, if one is interested in let us say looking at all the different root PEs and how uh, time is distributed in various application regions, there is this flame graph where uh, you could see a overview of uh, uh, the various processes. So, this is uh, experiment 3326 and then we are looking at rank 21600. So, this is mostly running the ocean component as you can see from the frame graph. So, you, you can navigate further by drilling deeper into these or going back uh, and looking at uh, uh, looking at the time distribution within the, the, within the run. So, uh, the idea is to show you a representation of uh, where application time has been spent uh, and then you can interactively navigate into that. So, uh, the root process here is running atmosphere and ice. So, you could guess which uh, which components are running where, but uh, you could also look get this data from the PE layout diagram in a high level overview. The idea here is to drill down deeper into uh, which application sub regions are spare uh, are hot spots and, and you can focus your optimization efforts there. Uh, so, we looked at tree graphs, we looked at flame graphs. Uh, if there are a few experiments of interest, uh, uh, let us see uh, these two experiments seem to be of comparable length and uh, slightly different throughput, but uh, not much. So, if you wanted to compare, uh, you can select the stats files for comparison or uh, so some of these are enabled based on your selection here. So, some of the supported uh, graph types will be uh, will be depending on the selection that you made. So, if you want to compare across two experiments you select those stats files and then you could see uh, uh, at the high level overview which application timers differ and and how much. So, so this gives you a good uh, uh, comparison capability uh, to look at multiple experiments. Uh, uh, going back into uh, if you want to there are a few uh, types of uh, graphs that are very specific to uh, some components. So, in this case if you select the stats component and click on the atmospheric time distribution plot this brings up uh, the atmospheric plot which actually shows you uh, the detailed timing distribution within various uh, uh, atmosphere sub components. Uh, so, you can also do this for multiple experiments as well. So, if you want to uh, compare a few experiments and, and look at this atmospheric timing distribution, uh, you can do that by selecting them and then uh, you, you can see this uh, kind of spread over uh, the various sub components within atmosphere. So, this is will be of more interest when you are comparing this uh, different kinds of runs as well. So, high risk water cycle versus uh, uh, MMF or um, or deck simulations or low rest. So, you, you could see how the distribution differs across all of them. Uh, so, uh, going back into this uh, experiment details view. Uh, so, you can get to the tree graphs and the flame graphs for the separate ranks uh, from these handy links as well. Uh, if, if selecting those uh, and getting to them from the search results what we view is one mode of getting there. Uh, this is an alternative mode of getting there. The atmospheric process distribution link also takes you to the uh, to the atmospheric uh, time distribution graph as well. So, uh, the various graph types even if you uh, uh, these are handy links to getting to those, uh, those kind of things. So, the PE layout diagram actually shows you which components are placed where and how much time is spent uh, uh, by the model. 
uh, in uh, during the actual simulation and you get this in a tabular format as well. So, uh, one can also look at the raw data for all these experiments uh, by downloading it yourself. So, this contains all the provenance information that we could find uh, for that experiment uh, including all the case talks. Uh, uh, the relevant XML files and the timing files as well. So, uh, you could look at you know the run.xml files and what options you might have specified for that. Uh, uh, there are uh, there are most of the other things would be uh, documents and other things as well. So, uh, so all the raw data is available for further interrogation in case that is of interest. Uh, so, so far I have shown you uh, most of the things that you can navigate by uh, from the menu menu itself. There is also a very advanced search capability here. Uh, so, one can go to the home page and, uh, and search for a particular let us say a particular users experiments or uh, it could be a component query. So, you could give a username as well as a machine to get a particular user and a machine uh, or particular users experiments on a particular machine as well. So, you can also do this for uh, uh, comp sets. So, uh, you can look for specific comp sets, you can also couple this with uh, specific resolution, uh, you can also uh, look for experiments uh, uh, for uh, by case name as well. So, uh, I happen to know that uh, these uh, theta dot 2018 uh, uh, the naming uh, for these case names uh, rest from the various configurations of the tuned water cycle campaign, high res water cycle campaign. So, this is the uh, official uh, high res water cycle campaign data and then I can look through this uh, data to look into uh, look into deep dive into some of those experiments of interest. Uh, again, uh, Oh, another capability that I would like to highlight is this uh, kind of summary plot. So, let us say we are looking for all the experiments that have been run on summit. Uh, so, I can generate a summary scatter plot which will show me the simulated years per day uh, versus the total processing elements used for those experiments. So, uh, you can uh, sub select based on users or more of more interest would be this comp set. So, you could see the range of comp sets and the model throughput that you get from that. Uh, so, in this case I mean we have some land comp sets which have high model throughput. So, taking those out you could focus on oh the diversity of components and then you can filter further down to look at uh, which components were getting what kind of throughput on that platform. So, the the, de the search results summary page will still be there. So, you can uh, get into a particular kind of experiment and then look the, look further into those details as well. So, uh, so these are some of the uh, some of the features of uh, of the Pace Web Portal, and uh, you we encourage you to uh, browse the data, the data and uh, figure out what are the insights that you can gain from there and. Um, and provide us feedback on what other features you might like to see. So, uh, uh, there is uh, as I mentioned, so there are some search tips as well. So, the, you can do an advanced search uh, using some of these attributes. So, it is a free form search with uh, autocomplete, uh, but you can also do uh, specific users by uh, specific fields uh, searching with uh, those attributes. So, user colon username uh, and so on. So some of the other available categories are actually given down there and you could also pipe results. Uh, so, uh, by that what I mean is user pipe. Uh, so, if you want to look at two uh, particular users you will get uh, both of them. So, at one time. So, this these are to enable kind of comparisons uh, multi experiment comparisons and other things as well. So, the raw data is meant to uh, if you want to drill down further and there is an experiment type or uh, some other data that you uh, could not access from the web portal itself you could get the raw data and look at it yourself. So, the, the entire infrastructure is backed by uh, uh, various python middleware components there is a database uh, relational database on the back end and there is a high performance uh, uh, file server uh, minio file server also serving some of the raw data files. So, uh, uh, please explore the data and let us know if you, there are any f further feature requests and we will be happy to um, ha happy to help. Thank you.